This show is part of the RetroZap.com podcast network. And welcome everybody to a very special episode of the Animaniacast. An Animaniac, some people say I'm out of whack. You can't miss our wild show with my cute sis and my bro. We all act like we're insane along with Pinky and the Brain. Bobby Squid and Pesto, Scratch and Sniff, Hip Hip Pose, Rito Runt, Chicken Boo, Slappy Doo. We dance and sing and do all kinds of crazy things. Oh, we're the amazing Animaniacs. We split your sides and half. We are the most exciting ever. So watch us because you'll love us. We'll be on your team. Weekday afternoons right here on Fox. And welcome once again to the Animated Cast. This is the only podcast out there that's dedicated to the animated television series Animaniacs. And here we explore the series episode by episode. We can talk about all the cultural references and gags that we can talk about. And in the end, we give each and every episode a water tower rating. I am Joey, and joining me, as always, is my brother, Nathan. Lama, 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 lama. <laughs> <laughs> Across the country in Georgia, it's Kelly. I'm hiding from the puppy children. <laughs> <laughs> and... And joining us once again, it's our honorary fourth uh, host of the Animaniacast. It's the creator of Animaniacs himself. It's Mr. Tom Ruger. Hello, Animaniacast. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> well, uh, we, as as many of our longtime listeners might know, we're we're actually completely done. We're 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 done with all the Animaniacs episodes, or so you would think. Because there's so much to discuss with Animaniacs, there really is. And so we figured, why don't we sit down with Tom and go over the very, the beginning. The beginning, the beginning, <laughs> the beginning <laughs> of our story. Uh, we're going to be talking about episodes 1 through 10 of Animaniacs, the first two weeks of Animaniacs. Uh, way back in 1993, and uh, you know Tom has a, a a few little extra things as well to, for us uh, when we're done with our little conversation. But uh, I'm I'm excited for this because this is uh these are a really good bunch of ten episodes. Uh, Nathan Kelly, what were, what were your thoughts when you were sitting down and and kind of going over the list? I know Nathan, you were able to to binge watch. Mm-hmm. All ten of these episodes. <laughs> Was it all today that you watched them all? Yep. Oh boy. Okay. Wow. So <laughs> fresh. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are your thoughts on these first ten episodes, Nathan? Let's start with you, just in general. They're, they're all great. Well, I mean, some uh, uh, we did get low water tower ratings on one of these, Ooh. but I think it was better the second time watching it. I don't know. I just <laughs> I enjoyed all of them quite a bit. So okay. there's some real classics for sure. Absolutely. And uh, and Kelly, what about you? Well, this list has Wally Lama and Hooked on a Ceiling, so it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, those are two of of Kelly's it, perhaps all time favorite episodes of of Animaniacs. Definitely. Yeah, and and of course the Nations of the World. Yeah, oh yeah, my goodness! World. Yes. So we have quite a few awesome ones right there. Well, Tom, take us back. 1993. This is now the the beginning of uh, of the run of Animaniacs, and this is, of course, you started working on the series. What was it? Two two years before, really, it premiered. Is that how long? It started it fall fall of 91. We began uh, work on it. Uh, that's when. The idea struck me, and, and then uh, we got the crew and the artists and the writers to start coming up with uh, scenarios. Um, yeah, so, yeah, we started two years ahead of uh, our premiere date. Mm-hmm. So by the time we premiered, we already had about 30 half hours worth of cartoons in the can, wow. ready to go. Wow. And this, this offers... 
an incredible luxury uh, when you're trying to make a good first impression. We could front load the series uh, the first two weeks with what we felt were our very best efforts. And uh, so to get the best efforts on these cartoons, it was always a kind of a, a combo of, of artistry, of, of animation, of writing, of voice work, of music. So not every cartoon, you know, hit it out of the park, but some of these in the first uh, two weeks, in the first month, really, uh, really captured all the sort of uh, lunacy and irreverence and just uh, charm and fun that we wanted to uh, create in Animaniacs. And in, in reviewing these, uh, like, like Nate, I, I took a peek at some of these uh, in the last 48 hours. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and I noticed there's there's a variable quality to the animation. Some of it's brilliant. Some of it's you know not so not perfect. Uh, we had five animation companies. Uh, I may be wrong there, but we had TMS, we had Cuckoo's Nest, we had Star Tunes, then we had uh, also we had Acom and uh, Freelance Graphics in New Zealand. Now. Uh, I like, I prefer the first three of those uh, s- studios. And, um, but a TMS cartoon it looks different than a Cuckoo's Nest cartoon, which looks different than uh, a, a Star Tunes cartoon. And I think what you'll find in the first uh, couple weeks, the, the very best of our shows uh, in those first weeks often are by. Uh, uh, animated by uh, Star Tunes, Cuckoo's Nest, and TMS. Um, and we can go over that, and you can see the differences in, in those cartoons. Now, on the very first day of the show, uh, which uh, had um, Desanitized and uh, the Monkey Song and uh, Nighty Night Tune, the Nighty Night Tune was done by Freelance Graphics, which is, uh, and, and they were, uh, you know, great people, but they were not churning out uh, the best quality animation. And so we really, uh, we really had to edit around that one. And yeah. that, that's, that's what we would do when we got a, a cartoon that was kind of sitting there and not quite working. We would just edit the daylights out of it. A, a seven minute cartoon would become like a three and a half minute cartoon. <laughs> uh, that happened with uh, Mo- the Moby the Moby Dixter. Which one? What was oh the yeah, Moby or not Moby? I think is yeah. that what that was called. Yeah, it was a great script, but uh, animated so uh, just wildly off model that uh, mm-hmm. we, we had to really pare it down. Same with Broadcast Nuisance. We had to edit the daylights out of that due to the the look of it. But anyway. Back to uh, this uh, batch of shows. So we had 30 half hours, and they had this wall of cards that had all all the Warner cards were like uh, green cards that had all the Warner cartoons, and the slappy cartoons were pink, and the pink and the brand cartoons were yellow. And so we'd mix and match uh, to build half hours. We did not make these shows as half hours. We uh, a month or so before premiere. I started just piecing the shows together. And there were a lot of variables because we had, you could call them Easter eggs in our show. We had a different, uh, uh, at the end of the main title, it was often a different tagline. You know, here's the show's Namie or Pinky mm-hmm. and the Brainy or Dana Delaney. Uh, we had, uh, at the very end of the show, uh, the, the sign-off would be different. You know, like they would pretend Elvis is in the tower with them or they would say, good night, nurse. But, uh, so those were variables. But then within the framework of the show, we had uh, different little bits. We had, uh, they would escape from the tower. We had those little cards. We had the wheel of morality at the end. So, uh, and, and lots of little sub-main titles that would uh, go for the, uh, like Slappy would have her own theme song if we had time to play that. Uh, same with uh, Pinky and the Brain. So the show had a lot of things that could, uh, could, be used to like fill in tiny gaps when when the length of the show maybe was off. Uh, oh, we had of course you know the Colin uh, cartoons, you know, mm, uh, yeah, uh, Randy Beeman, and we had a uh, uh, good idea, bad idea, etc. Mime time. So all of these cards were on the wall, and so it was 
or the job at that point for me was to pick the best uh, batch of cartoons to put on that first week so that uh, we would make a great first impression and people would say, hey, I'm going to watch this every day. So what I found was, uh, well, we, we planned for the Warner Brothers and their sister dot to have a definite presence in every half hour at least for the first month or so. So in the very first half hour, we presented them uh, in, a, in a, I think, a great introductory cartoon, Desanitized. Uh, written by Paul Rudd and uh, just, just a, I think Rusty Mills uh, directed, just a gorgeous, funny, clever cartoon. And how many cartoon series uh, each that premiere, uh, the first, the very first cartoon episode in it uh, is about the character <laughs> of the psychiatrist off. Yes, exactly. Uh, so, a little different. <laughs> Well, you know, and what's really brilliant about that ability to t- to put each one into the psychiatrist's office is that each one, you got to get to know each and every one of those characters within mm-hmm. that little minute or so and find out their little, you know, quirks, uh, which separated each Warner sibling from each other. Yeah, I know, got Dot, one Dot, one is, time. Dot is so beautifully laid back in that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Yakko is clearly messing with him. Wacko seems uh, sweet but sin- and sincere, but sort of, uh, you know, hungry. Uh, <laughs> and they each show their foibles, but they each really, in their own special way, defy Dr. Scratch and Sniff. I say a word, and you say any word that you think of. Any word that comes to mind. Brain. No, no, no we haven't started. Begun. No, wait. Yield. No, stop. Cease. Silence! Quiet. Enough! Plenty. What? You please listen. Here. No, you stupid kid. You don't understand. Comprehend. Ah! Get out. Get out. Get out! Leave, leave, leave. So that's that was a, a great uh, first cartoon to throw out there to give people a taste of, of the Warners. And... So then that same half hour, uh, we had the monkey song, which uh, was about the best looking cartoon we had that included the entire cast. One Monday morning, I got up late and there were these monkeys outside the gate. The guard tried to stop somebody, had no luck. The monkeys got free and they are in a muck. I don't know what to say, the monkeys won't do. Don't know what to say, the monkeys won't do. I don't know what to say, the monkeys won't do. Don't know what to say, the monkeys won't do. My office was run by the studio nurse. I came downstairs and what could be worse? The monkeys was doing a crazy dance. They put buggies in my underpants. So, again, it was, a, I think, a scratch and sniff heavy first half hour. Uh, but it definitely worked. And then uh, in the final cartoon, uh, Slappy uh, makes a, a brief appearance as a... Uh, the, uh, the lady in the uh, Nighty Night Tune cartoon. Mm-hmm. And an old squirrel lady in cap and nightgown sits in her rocker and says, Hey, pal, pipe down. Oh, uh, right. Uh, well, then. And then we signed off with uh, Goodbye Nurse, which uh, in the monkey song, uh, they you got the idea that they were pretty uh, intent on meeting up with the nurse, so it, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Now... Another way that the show, I think, got off on the right foot is that we explained ourselves completely in uh, in the very first half hour, and I, subsequently during that week, we, uh, well, in later uh, in a week or so, we did it again. But the newsreel prologue, uh, Dateline 1930, you know, the Warner Brothers and their sister Dot are created. You know, they're they're crazy and they're putting the water tower and locked up until today. So uh, the show itself, with that little uh, nugget of information, really uh, set itself up pretty clearly. Oh, yeah. I mean, we even, I think even Newsreel of the Stars, that ran on, I think even was even put on 
wasn't it the last episode? I, I think, think the even? last episode. Yeah, <laughs> the newsreel. So just to add a little uh, extra padding to it. But. I know we were. <laughs> oh, that's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I thought an extra thirty seconds. And... Yeah, we were talking to each other when we were finally reviewing the third one. I th- we all said, "I think we all know who the Warners are at this point." I think <laughs> <laughs> if you're coming in for the first time now, <laughs> just uh, in 99th case. Ninety ninth episode. Yeah. Then <laughs> we had the, the also in that episode we had the pigeons on a wire just kind of staring up at the sunset. <laughs> Beat each other up. But that also had uh, uh, Nival Nose Nest. In, yes. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I love that character. Yeah, it was, that was so fun. <laughs> well, and also, uh, the, the Animaniac Suite uh, appears in that final episode, uh, which was, of course, Richard Stone's uh, opus mm-hmm. for uh, the great uh, series work that he did. That mm-hmm. needs to be performed in concert somewhere. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, some of the things I noticed with episode uh, one, uh, number one, it was, you know, they said, hello, nurse, of course. That's the first appearance of, you know, <laughs> hello, nurse comes in. Now, was hello, nurse always planned to be named that? Because I know that in some of these episodes, uh, Scratch and Sniff just calls her Miss Nurse. And I'm not exactly sure if, you know, her her name I know is hello, nurse and almost everything. But um, how did yeah, well, her, yeah. Yeah, the the answer to your question is a good question. The, her name initially was not Hello Nurse. Hello Nurse was literally their, uh, you know, it's it's our answer to What's Up Doc. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, they would, and we didn't know, I didn't even know uh, we were going to just have uh, them say it to only a nurse. Well, <laughs> obviously they didn't. They wound up saying it to just about every uh, <laughs> woman they found attractive. But uh, and of course, Dot used it on on Mel Gibson and different characters <laughs> too. Like, uh, but uh, initially it was hello nurse. It's sort of a generic. Uh, like everyone could be a nurse. Uh, so when we decided, oh, all right, we need a name for the nurse. Uh, it just sort of like this was probably after a month of writing uh, different <laughs> shows. Oh, well, let's just call her Hello. And uh, so <laughs> I, I don't know if it makes any sense, but uh, <laughs> she's certainly in the final movie in the Wacko's Wish movie. She proved to be quite quite the uh, uh, successful uh, entrepreneur and is not, uh, not the airhead that her voice might indicate. No, mm-hmm. not at all. And then, of course, there's that the song Hello, Nurse, as well, that, you know, they talk... Wacko talks about her, you know, knowing uh, Japanese and oh, know, yeah. mathematics. We can't and... talk about that. That's not in the first ten. I'm episodes. sorry. I'm sorry. Let's get back. <laughs> right. But but <laughs> but Tom. Uh, also, with episode one, we had um, the monkey song. Now, we were shocked to find that the monkey song was actually Harry Belafonte. <laughs> we had no <laughs> idea. And uh, I talked to a lot of uh, fans of Animaniacs. We, they all thought that oh this is just it's just an animaniac song uh did you now you adapted that did you grow up like you know liking the the Harry Belafonte song exactly or? that is exactly <laughs> correct okay I uh when I was a kid uh when in the summer maybe we'd uh, have people over and that album was you know it was not a brand new album when I first heard it uh you know in the 60s it was i think it was from the 50s anyway the album had this monkey song and i love the monkey song the nothing in the world the monkeys won't do nothing in the world the monkeys. and so harry belafonte uh i it is my understanding it was a uh traditional uh uh kind of folk song uh of uh the Car- caribbean and so harry belafonte uh recorded it and uh now, I don't know if he wrote it, but ultimately he, he gets uh, uh, a writing credit on that. And uh, I think I told you that story already that we went on the air uh, on Monday. I, I did tell you this, right, about this this particular cartoon? Uh, remind me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going on the air on Monday. It's going to September 13th, 1993, this coming Monday. And on Thursday, before that Monday, uh, we got a call from uh, legal. I got a call from the legal department, John Shulman and crew. And they said, hey, what's with this monkey song? 
And I said, what do you mean, what's with this monkey song? Well, we don't have the rights to that. And I, I said, of course we do. We, I, I sent you all the memos for, you, for us to line up the rights, and everyone said it was cool. And mm-hmm. turns out uh, the ball was dropped <laughs> by the legal department. And uh, so we're going on the air on Monday with a, a, a song that is, is not owned by us, which is not something that uh, companies like Warner Brothers uh, <laughs> likes to get involved with. <laughs> so uh, they negotiated with Harry Belafonte and his team over that weekend so that on Monday we could actually play that cartoon. Yeah, uh, you have not told us that. Yeah, that, I've not heard that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was uh, that was the excitement right before uh, the monkey song went on. And... Uh, as for, uh, you know, so anyway, the, it, it's a wonderful cartoon, uh, it beautifully uh, animated by uh, TMS. So we have a TMS cartoon right there. We have Desanitized by Cuckoo's Nest. And I'll tell you, when that cartoon, Desanitized, came back from Cuckoo's Nest, and these were the first cartoons, uh, that, was, that was the first cartoon we received back from Cuckoo's Nest. And... So we had it in the movie. Literally, we had movie ovals back then. And it's going through, making all the noise and everything. And we saw Yakko, Wacko, and Dot. And they were so cute. It was, <laughs> they were just adorable. And their soft, cute faces. And you just wanted to squeeze them. Uh, we, were, we were just thrilled. And the way they sort of handled their eyelids, it was just adorable. Now, the monkey song... Those cartoons, uh, came, uh, you know, the TMS cartoons came back too, and they were beautifully animated. Uh, but I, I will contend that Yakko, Wacko, and Dot are a little bit cuter in the Cuckoo's Nest cartoons than they are in the in the TMS cartoons, mm-hmm. and they're also very cute uh, in uh, uh, Star Tunes cartoons. Yes. Well, uh, let's move on to episode two. Uh, sure. Episode two. Uh, had a, a, a you know some really fantastic segments as well. We had Yakko's World, Cookies for Einstein, Win Big uh, with Pinky and the Brain, which are first Pinky and the All Brain. All right, can any of you, uh, I, any each one of you or any of you, sing Yakko's World? I can. I think it's time. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Are you serious? I am serious. Go, Kelly. Go. She usually okay. needs to do this after a few drinks. It's been a while since I've done it, but I'll do This was sure. from September 14th, 1993. And, and let's look at how this cartoon has impacted your life, Kelly. <laughs> okay. United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti, Jamaica, Peru, Republic of Dominican, Cuba, Caribbean, Greenland, Salvador, Tu, Puerto Rico, Colombia, Venezuela, Honduras, Guyana, and still Guatemala, Bolivia, then Argentina, Ecuador, Chile, Brazil, Costa Rica, Belize, Nicaragua, Bermuda, Bahamas, Tobago, San Juan, Paraguay, Uruguay, Suriname, Efrich, Guyana, Barbados, and Guam, Norway, and Sweden, Iceland, and Finland, and Germany, now One Piece, Switzerland, Austria, Czechoslovakia, Italy, Turkey, and Greece. Poland, Romania, Scotland, Albania, Ireland, Russia, Oman, Bulgaria, Saudi Arabia, Hungary, Cyprus, Iraq, and Iran. There, Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Israel Jordan, both Yemen, Kuwait, and Bahrain. The Netherlands, Les Amber, Belgium, and Portugal, France, and Denmark, and Spain. India, Pakistan, Burma, Afghanistan, Thailand, Nepal, and Bhutan. Cambodia, Malaysia, then Bangladesh, Asia, and China, Korea, Japan, Mongolia, Laos, Tibet, Indonesia, the Philippine Islands, Taiwan, Sri Lanka, New Guinea, Sumatra, New Zealand, and Borneo, and Vietnam. Tunisia, Morocco, Uganda, Angola, Zimbabwe, Djibouti, Botswana, Mozambique, Gambia. South Swaziland, Gambia, Guinea, Algeria, Ghana, Burundi, Lesotho, and Malawi, Togo, the Spanish Sahara is gone, Niger, Nigeria, Chad, and Liberia, Egypt, Benin, and Gabon, Tanzania, Somalia, Kenya, and Mali, Sierra Leone, and Niger, the home of Namibia, Senegal, Libya, Cameroon, Congo, Zaire, Ethiopia, Guinea, Bissau, Madagascar, Rwanda, Mayor, and Kimon, Hong Kong, Abu Dhabi, Qatar, Yugoslavia, Crete, Mauritania, then Transylvania, Monaco, Lincoln, Stein, Malta, and Palestine, Fiji, Australia, Sudan. Oh my goodness! I usually do it when drunk, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I that remember was, that was like, fabulous. Were, how old were you when you learned that? Um, so ninety three. So I, I think about fifteen, sixteen. Wow, fabulous! fabulous. My mom That's bought me great. the. She bought the cassette tape um, from Best Buy, and it had the lyrics, so I just memorized them. 
Beautiful. Yeah. Brilliant. You know, that, that's, I remember um, when we had uh, Randy, Randy Rogel on, he, he mentioned how he remembered Kelly being able to recite all those. So there yeah, you go. It's not. Dragon Con. Yes. It's not something many, many fans can do all the way through. They know that, you know, certainly I can do the first couple lines, but that's I can do it. the first three. <laughs> <laughs> I can yes. do Baton Rouge, Louisiana on the other one. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, well, it helped because it helped me out because one time, um, I mean, I wasn't on Jeopardy, but one time there was a Jeopardy clue and the, um, the contestant said Nabibia. And I'm like, that's not right. That's not right. They didn't pronounce it correctly. And they came back after the commercial and it said it's Namibia. And <laughs> the, I knew how to spell it because I had the, the, country memorized. <laughs> so if I'd been on Jeopardy that time, I would have gotten it right. Awesome. Well, that was great. And uh, you. so you and probably uh, thousands of other kids definitely memorized that song. And mm-hmm. uh, and that that song, of course, is, has lasted, you know, I think that and the Animaniacs theme song are probably the two songs that that uh, make the biggest impact from the show. And, uh, of course, Robin and, and Randy are out doing uh, the concerts of the live Animaniacs, and that's a, a featured song on that. Well, I, I remember that the, the the country song was a clip they kept showing to promote the show, um, and that that's what really grabbed me. I thought that was amazing and catchy, and I just loved it. I loved the animation of it. I thought it was great. Now, that cartoon, uh, I think I did tell you this one. Uh, uh, one of our storyboard artists wanted to make it uh, more complicated and have hats. Uh, have every, oh, every, yes. uh, every country represented with a different hat, and Yakko would put on different hats, and it was like, I don't think there's going to be time. <laughs> <laughs> As Kelly just demonstrated, there's not <laughs> enough time. And probably some of those countries... They don't have hats. Yeah, I don't know what Namibia, Namibia has a hat or not. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but we may not figure out what that hat is. Um, so that was a big hit song that we did play a lot uh, for commercials. Um, Cookies for Einstein is another uh, excellent Paul Rudd script uh, with Acme equaling E equals MC squared backwards is just brilliant. Mm-hmm. There's the A, that's first, there's a C, that's next, there's an M, you're almost done. There's the E, it's last, now spell it out, A, C, M, E, that's fine. No, backwards! There's the E, that's last, there's the M, it's next, there's C, you're almost done. There's the A, it's first, what's first is last, E, M, C, A, we're done. Pretty good, Waggle, but your A always looks like a two. That's it! That's it! The theory of relativity! E equals mc squared! Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared! Your kids is geniuses! E equals mc squared! E equals mc squared! E equals mc squared! And so then we get the first appearance of Pinky and the Brain. Now, uh, like Kelly, I'm a big Jeopardy fan. And uh, so when uh, we... We're thinking about the very first episode. I thought, well, uh, and I calculated. I, I somehow I figured out that you could make if you basically won every point, and then the last, the last Jeopardy, uh, the last um, question that you answer is like the Daily Double. At, after you made all the money you possibly can. Uh, I think I calculated what that number would be, and, and it was close to what uh, the brain was trying to win on Jeopardy. $99,000? Nerf! Ooh, where are we going to get that, brain? Sorry, Matilda. That's incorrect. What did you wager? <laughs> All of it. Oh, that's too bad, because you could have won $99,000. Pinky, are you pondering what I'm pondering? I think so, brain. But where are we going to find a duck and a hose at this hour? And that was our first uh, longer cartoon in the whole series. It was like a two-parter. 
at least there was a commercial break in the middle. Yes. And then along came Wheel of Morality, which uh, I, I love the Wheel of Morality. And uh, and the first one, of course, was if at first you don't succeed, blame it on your parents. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching that episode last night with my wife, and she said, well, wait a minute. I say that all the time. You're telling me I got that from Animaniacs? <laughs> and I said, apparently. <laughs> Yep, that's. Uh, I believe that line was written by uh, Sweeney, uh, Mark Sweeney, who's Sherry Stoner's uh, husband. He uh, he he wrote a lot of the uh, mime times and a lot of the uh, episodes of, of uh, Wheel of Morality. Yeah, that Earth. is perhaps my favorite uh, uh, mor- Wheel of Morality moral. The first one right there. I just I love that one. I want to put that on a shirt. <laughs> and, and, the, and the, other the, one love, the other one I love of his is uh, if you have nothing nice to say, you're probably at the ice capades. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, I, it's completely unfair to the ice capades, but it's just a funny line. <laughs> and uh, Nathan, what was your what was your favorite thing right there with the uh, wind big? Oh, the- I just. Um... Of course, the suit. I don't know. I think just being in that suit is just hilarious. And then also being called Brian the whole time during <laughs> Brian. the parody. <laughs> Brian. Yeah. yeah, the suit. I had to fight everybody. Everybody wanted to bring the suit back. And I said, yep, the suit's great. And someday we can bring it back. But uh, they were at some point in season one, people were saying, let's use the suit all the time. And no, you can't do that. I don't think <laughs> it came back until... The think, second episode of Pinky and the Brain, right? Yeah, uh, the actual I think so. series. So yeah, we, I think we not until the spinoff. Yeah, which which kind of surprised I know us because it felt like at least initially like we see we've seen the suit more than just that once, but I think they ran it in so many of the promos and well, and uh, it gets used a lot in the uh, in the spinoff series. It did get used a handful of times for sure. I remember specific episodes. Mm-hmm. That we haven't done yet that right he uses it in so yeah I, I i basically on pinky and the brain uh just wanted to keep it sort of uh simple and uh i, I think his goals are uh ridiculous mm-hmm. and uh the way he goes about them elaborately uh often completely absurd but there's a simplicity to it in that there's uh, these two mice, mice, one being brilliant, the other being uh, a nincompoop, and they uh, they just repeat the same sort of lines of dialogue each night, and they, they go through the same sort of routines, and uh, it really, uh, I think, caught everybody's attention. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, Pinky in the Brain... Uh, Got a lot of uh, positive feedback uh, in those first couple episodes. Mm. It's uh, yeah, it's nice because you have that structure that you can build off of, but you have this like s- strong structure that is always good, you know. Yep. It, and you're right, Tom, because I I don't think like putting the suit. I mean, one of the some of the the charm of Pinky and the Brain is the fact that these humans often don't really <laughs> believe that these are two mice. So mm-hmm. you get like the brain just dressed up like later on in the Fort Knox episode. I think they're just he's just dressed up in a suit, a little you know, and he's still yeah, you know, suit, he, yeah, yeah. He goes, "I'm oh, Mr. Perkins or whatever," and uh, the you know the police officer doesn't think twice. He just thinks, "Well, it's obviously a it's a small <laughs> human," you know. Yeah. Uh, what happened to your head? Yeah. Well, and then like Bubba Bo Bob brain gets the long legs. Just yeah, Bubba Bo Bubba Bo. Yeah, just a great little outfit for him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, so uh, Pinky and the Brain, they, they got off to a very good start uh, with uh, the Jeopardy episode. Uh, and Alex Trebek, uh, I forget who did the voices. Perfect. Uh, so let's, go to episode, let's go to episode three. It was Rob. That's right. Yeah. Uh, okay, episode three uh, has HMS Yakko, Slappy Goes Walnuts. And then uh, another song, Yakko's Universe, this time. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's, that's a beauty. And, and um, now we'll note that this is the third episode in a row uh, with Paul Rugg 
scripting uh, the uh, Warner Brothers and the Sister Dot cartoon. So it's clear, I think you can see how much I love Paul Rudd's writing, his comedy, and the way he treats the Warners. It just basically these three cartoons were uh, as strong as any that I, I knew of. So. Uh, he did cookies for Einstein, he did design ties, now he's doing HMS Yakko, which uh, is a Gilbert and Sullivan parody. And uh, Mr. Rugg since has been uh, directing uh, Gilbert and Sullivan at, at uh, the high school uh, where his daughter uh, attended. And uh, he's been nominated for like national awards with for his direction. So he really is, uh, he's, he's so talented and what he did with this Gilbert and Sullivan stuff was just hilarious. And even though kids, you know, kids aren't banging on the door saying, more Gilbert and Sullivan, please. <laughs> but but uh, what a great exposure for the kids to see these fun, these these three characters that the kids already love, uh, Yakko, Wakko, and Dot, uh, engaged in this, uh, in these sort of like polite operas. Very right. Funny. The I am the very model of a cartoon individual. I've seen just as many people sing that as, you know, Yakko's world because mm-hmm. it's such a catchy uh, tune. And um, it's just Paul did such a great job of, of putting that Gilbert and Sullivan song of a modern major general to uh, to fit Yakko. Uh, and he even mentions, I mean, he even ties in like not only Looney Tunes characters, but but. Babs and Buster Bunny too. I mean, so Babs it's, and Buster Bunny. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Awesome. To suit my mood, I can call forth a lot of different sceneries, like outer space and desert scapes and Himalayan eateries. From this bag here, why I can pull most anything imaginable, like office desks and lava lights and for two is a cannibal. <laughs> and then, of course. Here we have Slappy's very first cartoon, uh, and uh, animated by the beautiful, smart, talented, brilliant animators at Star Tunes. And uh, talk about cute, talk about adorable. I mean, Skippy, uh, Doug the dog is even cute. Um, <laughs> and Sherry Stoner doing the voice of Slappy, just hilarious. It's a really, I think that's just a wonderful cartoon. And, and it, it gives us uh, a, an example of a different school of, of animation where Slappy's, you know, tends to uh, use bombs <laughs> yes. a little bit more than the others. This is a very bomb-centric episode. I think uh, in HMS Yakko, they were sort of blowing up Captain Mel. Um, anyway. Yeah, the they dog. use a cannon. <laughs> yeah. But this is a this is a beautiful cartoon, and again, uh, Star Tunes, uh, the uh, John McClenahan and crew just did a, just an awesome job on this one. Yeah, and there's a one of the things I did notice, and, and maybe Sherry Stoner would be the one to ask for this one since uh, she wrote the episode. But there's this really popular uh, line in there where. Uh, she makes fun of Skippy and says that he's been walking, watching too much of that bonkers TV show. <laughs> um, <laughs> ah, no wonder you like that bonkers show. That junk's rotting out your brain there. Now, I, I know that a few um, months ago I had joked on April Fool's Day that we were going to change our podcast to the bonkers cast and <laughs> just talk about the episodes of bonkers. Meaning that I really never really liked that show at all. I thought it was <laughs> horrible, uh, the you know way of Disney trying to rip off Roger Rabbit and make something different. Mm-hmm. But well, I mean, th- was the, the way that you guys poked fun at Disney? Uh, I mean, did you guys really not like that show? I mean, why did that come across? Well, uh, Bonkers. Um, uh, you know, we had we were working on Animaniacs and. Uh, the Bonkers, uh, the people over at Disney were always trying to steal different people that were working on our shows. Oh. So uh, uh, Sherry got called over there by Gary Chrysler. Gary Chrysler was uh, in charge of Disney animation for, for a while. And he went to DreamWorks. And uh, basically Disney uh, 
I think they were relieved when he left, and I think uh, when when he got to DreamWorks, they were like, "Wait, what's this guy?" <laughs> <What's he doing? laughs> Love you, Gary. Anyway, uh, so Sherry got. Uh, they tried to uh, steal Sherry from us, and uh, she went over to Disney, and Gary Kreisel met with her, and he had a big pile of uh, stack of art. And he and he just looked at Sherry square in the eye, and he said, "You remember Bonkers? You know, this is before <laughs> Bonkers came out. This is before Bonkers came out, and we were already working on the the Warners, who were you know characters from the past. So he started uh, pitching Bonkers as this character from the past, and uh, well, it, it just sounded pretty nasty. So." Uh, <laughs> Sherry said thanks, but I'm going to stick with what I'm doing over at uh, Warner's. <laughs> yeah, and, and so no wonder. I mean, <laughs> oh my gosh, Bonkers was. Yeah, no, no more comments on that. But uh, one of our one of our <laughs> listeners, uh, who's Noisy Paper Dragon on Twitter, is a, is a Twitter handle. He's a great artist, by the way, um, uh, and says, uh, "How did it feel like uh, to actually work for Disney later after years of poking fun at them?" Yeah, I thought I was in trouble with that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Nancy Cantor, uh, basically, uh, she she would remind me on a, almost a weekly basis. Now, remember, you're over at Disney now, and we're just going to make cartoons just the Disney way. None of that, none of that, you know, fingerprint stuff. <laughs> None of that double entendre material. Uh, anyway, they, they really thought I was like uh, just trying to subvert the entire process. Uh, but, you know, I played by the rules there. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, before we, we move on, I just, you know, I was watching the episode last night. And I was wondering, uh, with Skippy, he comes in and, you know, this is the first time we're introduced to his character. Um, we're... What? Where are Skippy's parents? I was always wondering, like, were there were there ever any uh, uh, thoughts of showing his parents at any time? Or no, they they were run over by cars. <laughs> oh, <laughs> such a happy child, too. Just <laughs> well, Aunt Slappy, it's like it's like uh, being at your grandparents when they don't see you that much and they spoil you and they give you stuff. He he likes it there with uh, Aunt Slappy. It's <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know. Well, the, you have squirrels in your neighborhood, right? They, 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 it's like amazing. It's like they find the wheels of, of cars. It's like they're <laughs> I think Skippy's Skippy's still living with Slappy, though. I mean, you know, and it's been what twenty five years. He's like, he's like thirty eight. Yeah, he's in the basement. And, just... Yeah, and you know, <laughs> he's playing video games, and he claimed he's going to be a director, but he better stop playing the video games. <laughs> No, yeah, we we did release on uh, on a, one of our podcasts. There, Skippy Squirrel did make an appearance, and uh, he he records podcasts about horror movies and things like that. I don't mm-hmm. know. He's he needs to get moving with his life. But. Well, the the guy that does his voice, uh, I like, him, and he he's got uh, he just made a, a film uh, that's uh, at some film festivals, and he's got some scripts that he's been uh, feature length scripts he's been working on. So, yes. I think that. That Nate guy, he's going to be doing do just fine. Yes, that's right. Nate Ruger, just uh, the Trust Me uh, horror film right there. Just got, I just retweeted some of that stuff right there. He's going out to some film festivals. So yes, if you're... it's going to be in L.A. too, so yeah. check it out this well, month. Well, um, this episode also had Yakko's Universe at yes. the end of it. So, now, uh, is that the one with it. Mickey Rooney? Yep. Yeah. Oh, We're all God. tiny little specks about the size of Mickey Rooney. Now, <laughs> this song, uh, here's... here's info uh this was literally from my dad my i was we were working on the cartoons my dad uh visited and uh you know with my mom from new jersey and he he got into this like deep discussion of of uh the size of the universe and the molecules and that we could we could be just the uh tiny molecules inside another Giants universe and mm-hmm. and he just uh, it's like dad when did you start doing drugs you know <laughs> <laughs> so anyway I was telling Randy about this he said dad that's a song 
And anyway, Ranny, of course, made it into just a, a huge, beautiful thing. But uh, absolutely. Yeah. Now, it's, it, now I think we should dispel that rumor. Then I mean, or it's not a really a fact. It's on the Wikipedia. It says that it's a parody of uh, the Galaxy Song from Monty Python's Meaning of Life. I think it's just a coincidence. That's kind of a similar theme, but you didn't. You didn't. Uh, but no means a parody. Yeah. I mean. You know, one one humorous song. Uh, the, the, you know, I yeah. love Monty Python song, and it's very humorous. You know, because bugger all down here on Earth. Uh, <laughs> uh, and and you know, it, it states facts, and then it has a punchline. Well, th- this this song uh, is about uh, the great big universe, but it's it, it, what it deals with is, is other bits of information. And it has a different sense of humor, and by no means is it a parody. Yes, mm. yeah, I think so. I don't edit Wikipedia pages, but for those of you yeah. who do, edit that. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> let's move on to episode four. Um, episode four. This is, of course, another one of Kelly's uh, favorites right here. This is "Hooked on a Ceiling," and then we have uh, "Good Feathers: The Beginning," which is sometimes called "Good Feathers: uh, The Pilot." I think. Uh. Um, so. This is another great uh, bunch of uh, episodes. Of course, uh, Gordon Bresick and Charles M. Howe IV uh, putting together the, the script, and, and uh, Tom, you gave him the story for that first one there. Yeah, I worked uh, that. Yeah, I worked with them on that one quite a bit. I, I think uh, Kelly's got good taste. I think it's definitely uh, top five, uh, no doubt, of, of the Warner Brothers uh, cartoons. It just really has it all. It has a great opening with the ninja turtles it has uh it has a great uh impression uh sort of a kirk douglasy kind of <laughs> um and uh beautifully performed and then the the warners are uh, this is this is like the first thing uh when i brought charlie and gordon in to write something uh said i think this is the one you guys should do and and they brought to it a lot of irreverence and sort of just i mean it's just packed you look at that cartoon it's just packed with comedy there's no there's not a lot of dead time the warner yakko is just on his game and uh uh ceilings nothing more than ceilings uh, <laughs> uh, it's just packed just packed and uh I agree with Kelly. It's it's really, uh, you know, top three, maybe. Top three. Really great. But his eminence is coming tonight. They must be finished. Please, you got to help me. (laughs) Wait a minute. You expect us poor, innocent children to climb up dangerous scaffolding and paint naked people all over a church? We'll do it! But we're not doing it for the sake of art. And we're not doing it for the sake of money. No, we're doing it because... We like painting naked people. Well, of course, it, you know, it has his eminence in it, which I'm sure Kelly. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps that was highlight. the best reveal ever in a cartoon. And <laughs> I'll tell you what, at, at, uh, before we went on the air, this would be August, or no, July, excuse me, of 93, uh, we went to um, uh, uh, Comic Con. And this was the cartoon that we played for the crowd. You know, they didn't know what Animaniacs was, but it was a, it was a Warner Brothers uh, room. It was a huge room, and it, it, we had Tiny Toons. Uh, we had been doing that. We've been doing Batman, but so Animaniacs is coming on. What is it? Well, we showed this cartoon, and it killed. It, as they say, it killed. I'm telling you. <laughs> and I think that Kelly is right. The, the end with uh, the reveal of uh, his eminence. You, you got to know your audience. Uh, <laughs> It, it worked very well. Yeah. And also, uh, the, the a later cartoon, uh, this pun for hire, again, Gordon and Charlie and me, uh, this gun for hire um, had a great sort of DreamWorks, uh, the things that DreamWorks are made of ending that uh, I think was a, a very sort of fun ending. <laughs> well, uh Let's talk about the good feathers, uh, the beginning right there. Um, so, yes. It's, so it's we had a great cast. 
Mm-hmm. We had a great, their, their names were changing constantly. We finally, when we went on the air, they, they were Squid and Bobby and uh, Pesto. Uh, Deanna really nursed these cartoons all, all along. And, uh, and I, I just think she nailed it. I think the voice actors nailed it. And uh, I don't think pigeons have ever been uh, thought of the same since these cartoons were made. No, I, mean, I, I don't think there, there had not been a lot of respectful pigeon cartoons up to this point. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some great shots in it too. I mean, there's this great shot of uh, following the the three of them from the airport down into the subway, and the camera just pans below, you know, follows them. And then at the end, there's a great shot of um, Squit. Uh, what is he? He, you know, he's saying like, "Oh, I guess I'm out." And the the camera is like shooting him through the hole of the bagel, uh, yep. which is just. I, That's I, Greg Reyna. Yeah. Greg Reyna, the director, just uh, th- those animating backgrounds. I mean, uh, what a lot of work going down on the subway. Oh my god, it's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Fabulous stuff. All right, we did it. Yes, Pesto, you are one swell bird. What do you mean by that? Why well, I, I said you're swell. That's all. You saying that I got a big head? Is that what you're saying? What am I, a bloated, puffy roundhead here to amuse you? No, I didn't say that. I just, I said you're swell. I am swell? Yeah, you're swell. Swell? Yeah. That's it. Here's your swell. I got your swell right here. I saw your swell. Well, uh, moving on to the, the end of the first week here with episode five. And episode five had Taming of the Screwy. And so now we're at our your first half hour episode. Uh, That's right. This was, uh, uh, I think, just uh, a, a beautifully um, made cartoon. Alfred Gimeno directed it. Peter Hastings, uh, with the help of uh, Earl Kress and me, uh, wrote wrote the script. And this had a lot of inside jokes because the 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 people that we were trying to impress. Uh, the, we, the Warners, they were they needed to impress these visiting dignitaries from Japan, uh, uh, and the caricatures we used of those visitors were the caricatures of the people at TMS that were actually making the cartoon. So this was a, a TMS produced cartoon. Uh, um, also, it's clearly, uh, you know. What would you compare it to, My Fair Lady, where they're they're trying to be uh, scratch and sniff is trying to teach them how to behave. But if you uh, want to go for the comedy, I, I I base it on Hoy Polloi, which is a, a Three Stooges short from uh, late '30s. Hoy Polloi, and it really closely follows Hoy Polloi. Oh, okay. Yeah. Commence. O C the cat. Does the mouse see the cat? Yes, the dirty rat. Oh. Proceed. Oh, see the deer. Has the deer a little dough? Why, certainly. Two bucks. Oh, oh. Boys, I don't want to lose my temper, but this has been going on for two months. Listen, I have $10,000 at stake. Now, please, please, concentrate. And, I've and never it, seen it. And what I also like about this episode is that it introduces a lot of uh, celebrity caricatures, a lot like old Warner Brothers cartoons. I think it was the one called Hollywood Review or something like that. I, yes, but, that's but, right. Uh, yeah, but uh, what I appreciate about that is that as a kid, I would watch, you know, these Hollywood Review car- you know, cartoons or something like that, and I'd go, who is that? And my dad would say, oh, that's Peter Lorre right there. And I, <laughs> who's <laughs> Peter Lorre? You know, so, you know, I'm sure kids today are looking at that and going, okay, who's, you know, who's this, you know, Wayne and Garth? Michael and Keaton. Michael Mike... Keaton as Batman. And yeah. Batman. And Michelle and yeah, Pfeiffer so and, and Annette Benning and stuff. Steve right? Urkel asking for cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody down in cheese? <laughs> they know what that means. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Uh, um. Nicely done cartoon. Nicely made. Well, this this was also our first, uh, you know, I was writing down some of the firsts in here, and it, it was uh, the first "Good night, everybody." I believe is said in this one. Good night, everybody. Yep. <laughs> and the the first uh, time Dot has one of her pets, 
And of course, the first time Mr. Director, he, Mr. Director makes his premiere in this one as one of Dot's pets, which is so <laughs> weird. Um, that is weird. <laughs> But um, see, we had already made the cartoon, but it didn't. But it hadn't been uh, included in a half hour yet. Yeah. So I remember. Yeah. You know. Okay. Jerry Lewis is in here. This is interesting. But uh, mm-hmm. and then, of course, uh, Wacko's drum riff, which is you know recycled very often. We do. We effects. do. We we made that. Uh, I, the minute I saw that, I said, uh, "Okay, let's get the negative on that and print up a few copies." <laughs> <laughs> We're going to need that. Now we will work on our diction. How do we avoid bad elocution? Stay inside during a thunderstorm. <laughs> Shut up. That's John Mariano. He's the voice of Bobby from The Good Feathers. And you're listening to the Animaniacast. <sighs> oh. <sighs> Will you untie me now? Shh, call it. I'm listening to the program. So that was the first week. We're done with the yes. first week. Yay! First week's done. <laughs> we, were, we were on uh, Fox at that point. And we had great ratings. So, yeah, we were Excellent. killing it. Uh, yeah. how, how was your like uh, anxiety or anything like that before, I mean, at the beginning of the week? Uh, you, were you pretty confident that it was that you, you had it and you were, you were good to go or, you know? You never know. You never mm. know. Uh, I... I, I it was the my favorite cartoon that I ever I was ever involved in, uh, you know. And basically, I was just trying to create the same experience I had when I would watch Looney Tunes when I was a kid. And that experience was just like elation at these crazy characters just creating nonsense and fun. So, uh, and and they had a lot of charm too. So, uh, I knew that. This batch of shows, these certainly the first ten half hours, were packed with good things, and uh, so I, I didn't, I didn't imagine it wasn't going to be successful. I really, I really didn't. Yeah. Well, it yeah, it definitely took off, and I remember, you know, this first week, I was just running home from school to to check it out, and uh, well, the rest is history. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, Epi- uh, let's go to week two here. Episode six. Uh, episode six, Temporary Insanity. Uh, then we have Mindy and Buttons with Operation Lollipop. And then a song of uh, What Are We? Which I know a lot of people still ask, what are the Warners? Can I just tell yes, them? Yes, what are we? Maybe we are dogs, cute little dogs. Uh, we're just cute. Is that the punchline yes. of it? Mm-hmm. They're just cute. Yeah, well. well yeah. But of course, they're, they are... Uh, they're cartoon characters. That's we do know that. That's what they are. They are uh, cartoon characters from the '30s, and uh, you know, I, I spent a lot of time watching ancient cartoons when I was young, and uh, there were cartoons where I think they're like Farmer Alfalfa cartoons, where uh, they would just have this cycle. Of, they were black and white cartoons. The backgrounds are usually just white. And they'd have these animals going into like a stadium, filling up the stadium, and they would be on a cycle of just one animal after another. And quite honestly, you didn't know what these things were. I mean, <laughs> I guess I guess they were supposed to be mice and cats and dogs and hippos, but yeah, they weren't that close. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Yakko, Wacko, and Dot are from that school. Of course, uh, we had the good fortune and time and, and resources to spend some time designing them, so they they look cool and they look great. Uh, so yeah, so they're from that era when they were making cartoons and uh, uh, when they were first drawn. I suspect uh, they said, "Well, what is that? Is that a dog or a cat?" I don't know. It's just a cartoon character. So <laughs> that's the concept of that. Well, temporary insanity. Of course, this is when uh, the, the another Paul Rugg script. Uh, yeah. They they they're filling in for uh, Mr. Plotz's uh, secretary. secretary. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to take a letter. Where do you want me to take it? No, no. I mean, I want you to write a letter. Oh, okay. 
Dear Santa, I have been ever so good this year. I would like a new mallet and a shiny brass anvil. No, 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 no. Write a letter for me, for me. Well, I don't know what you want for Christmas. And uh, just wonderful energy. And uh, it, it makes, uh, looks like, it, it makes working in an office look like fun. <laughs> and uh, which is a, quite a trick. Uh, they, they certainly were having fun. Of course, they drive pots out of his mind. And uh, uh, yeah, so here we are. We're on our sixth day. Uh, so Paul has written, uh, I think, four Warners now. And the other two, uh, Tammy the Scurry was uh, Peter and me and Earl and and Gordon and Charlie and me on the other one. So Rug clearly has uh, he has the inside uh, track on the Warners. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, this and, is another great one where they have, each have their own separate interactions. Just like yep. uh, yeah. sanitize. And Mike Gerard, by the way, uh, he's right here with episodes six and seven and eight. These are literally Mike Gerard directed uh, half hours. So uh, he may not have had anything in the first week. Well, uh, but he's, he's just churning them out in week two. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, uh, well, you have Mindy and Buttons right there. So, the one, the characters that barely made it in, as we know <laughs> from their, their talks, if it wasn't for That's one of Spielberg's right. children. <laughs> now, I, 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 Barry uh, Caldwell boarded this one. Uh, and Peter uh, wrote it. Barry Caldwell really kind of directed this uh, along with Mike Gerard, and it's very adorable. I mean, I got It's a very cute thing, and and buttons is adorable. Uh, so, you know, I think it got off to a, a good start. And then Deanna Oliver uh, really developed this character uh, because, based on a, a neighbor whose uh, child was basically uh, leashed to a tree oh my God. <laughs> in the front yard, and. And Deanna would go by and say, "Hi, lady." <laughs> the <little kid> was, <laughs> so, this is this is an example of uh, you don't need to make it up. You can just use reality. Oh my god! Uh, so Deanna did, and uh, a lot of Mindy's moves are based on a, a real kid somewhere in the San Fernando Valley. <laughs> wow. Mindy, let's get you in your harness, and you can play out here in the yard. I've got a treat for you. Okay, lady. I'm your mother. Call me mom. Okay, lady. <sighs> now you should be perfectly safe in there. Here's your treat, hon. Lie. Thank you, lady. I love you. Bye bye. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Let's move. Uh, I guess on to episode seven. Episode seven in- involves. Uh, I th- is this our first big guest star with uh, John Reese Davies? I think maybe uh, coming on for Piano Rag. And then, well, we have Rita. Uh, oh, of course, we had two. Yeah, we had, and then of course Bernadette Peters with the first <laughs> yes. uh, Rita and Runt when Rita met Runt right after that. So this was our, our first. You know, we have big stars on this one. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, Piano Rag was based on uh, a real life incident. Sherry Stoner and I were invited by Nick Hollander to uh, go to a concert where Nick's brother, uh, a, a concert pianist, world-renowned, gave this concert. And, and now the Schubert, now... <laughs> and he, he would play uh, the most, you know, and, and you think a piano concert's going to be this beautiful music. He would play things uh, like that were complex and difficult to appreciate if you're not, like, deeply into uh, classical music. And you know, uh, not necessarily pretty stuff, but he, and maybe he was nailing it, but, <laughs> but we wouldn't know. It was just like, oh my gosh, when is he going to stop? And these pieces, they went on and on. Each, each thing he did was like an hour long. And so Stoner and I got back from, uh, we, we went to the after uh, concert event and Nick's brother, uh, well, what can I say? Yeah, uh, just, just uh, a real uh, piece of work. So. <laughs> Franz Schubert 
intended this scherzo to reflect the struggle between intellect and the creative process. Uh, I don't think he's a magician. Sure he is. This is just a setup. Hey, mister, pull a rabbit out of your pants. What, are you leaky tires? And, and so the, the, the cartoon itself is Nick and Sherry, and I sat with them and we worked on it. Basically, it was reliving that night. <laughs> as if as if the Warners had been in the audience the whole time. So we have the Warners being chased by Ralph the Guardian, Scratch and Sniff, and Hello Nurse, uh, and they're trying to elude them. They go into this concert, and there's Nick Hollander's brother. And by the way, the, the, the caricature uh, of the concert pianist is of Nick Hollander's brother. And Nick Hollander appears as the guy sweeping uh, the floor uh, and pushing the piano off stage. He's, he's the stagehand. Uh, anyway... Uh, I think I think the cartoon's great and and uh, yeah, based on real life. <laughs> well, uh, and then of course we have Rita when Rita met Runt, so we're setting up these two characters right here. Um, uh, just a really a, a great intro, I think, to the two characters. Now, did Bernadette Peters? Did you record that? Um, well, she she didn't come to L.A., did she? Or she yes, she did. She did. Oh, yes. okay. Oh. She came to L.A. for every one of her songs, every every recording session. When we would do maybe two read and runs when she was out, and uh, yeah, and then she would learn the song there at the session. She she uh, she probably we sent her a tape, but. It really, she didn't have the time to like really focus on it until she got to the session, and then she was her uh, basically her own director. And uh, you know, she'd sing and we'd play it back, and she'd say, "Oh no, no, I screwed this up. We got to fix this." And we thought she was hitting it on the first take, but uh, <laughs> she knew better. Yeah, it's a very this first initial song is I think a lot different than um, many of the the following ones. It's I don't know if. Uh, I don't know. I don't know music terminology that 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 well, but it, it has a a different kind of beat to it, I suppose you could say. Um, and what's the song? Which song it's is it? It's humans don't mean uh, much to me. Yeah. I think. yeah. This is this is Sherry in her bitter mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sherry definitely. You know, she Sherry uh, absolutely. Uh, directed uh, Rita to be like very uh, wary of human of humans. So, uh, and that became kind of like what the character was about. While Runt was like, he's ready to, you know, being the dog that he is, he's just ready to have everybody just love him and love him back. And Rita, of course, is the skeptic. <laughs> Which is, uh, you know, it's pretty interesting uh, duo. Uh, for a, a kid's cartoon show. Absolutely. Wolf? You're a dog! So are you. You're a good dog, Rita. A really good dog. I am a cat. A cat? A cat? Where? Where's a cat? Where's the furry feline? I'll chop it to bits! <laughs> Uh, okay, episode eight, uh, starting off with the uh, big candy store, and then we have another <laughs> just classic, uh, you know, slappy cartoon, Bumby's Mom. Yes. Yep. Big candy store uh, was Star Tunes, and uh, this was uh, the first cartoon of the entire series that was scored. This is the first one. Oh. So, big candy store. Uh, it was the first one we said, uh, Richard Stone, here you go. And, uh, and you know, we went to the session. It was, uh, you know, quite a, a big deal. And uh, he at that point, Richard was, like, making sure every note was just perfect. And, you know, he ultimately would – he'd try to do that every show. But, I mean, almost all the shows uh, – almost all the notes were perfect because uh, – he had the best musicians on earth working on it. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, big candy store. Uh, let's see. That's is that Rug? Yeah, I believe Mr. Rug wrote that. Yep. Uh, so we still have yet to see Mr. Rug's very first writing effort, which is the Beethoven cartoon. Yeah, that I, that's not even in our our first ten, which is so funny. No, it isn't. 
the way that the way that uh, things are structured. Um, yep. Yeah. So, the, and of course, another thing we didn't realize at the time, but the the big candy store, of course, is a reference to the the Marx Brothers uh, title, the big store, I believe. Which I gotta say, I watched. I remember when we first started doing these episode reviews. I watched. I actually got the. Marx Brothers film, The Big Store. I'm just to sorry. say, I'm going to watch this just to see what the similarity is, and, and there's none. There's nothing at all. <laughs> there is none. Yeah, that's not one of their best efforts. But we were at that point in, in the writing process. We we literally were watching uh, Marx Brothers movies uh, uh, during lunch hours, and uh, you know we were watching like uh, the first 20 minutes of Hell's a Poppin with. Olson and Johnson, yeah, we the war the uh, the Marx Brothers were definitely having a major influence on uh, Yakko for sure. We're the Warner Brothers and the Warner Sister. Buy something or leave. I like him, don't you? This is a great store, Mister Candyman. I'm not the Candyman. Well, you sell candy, don't you, kid? I'm not the kid. Relax, my good man. I am not your good man. Hmm. We're running out of options here. Well, let's get to Bumby's mom. Bumby's, Bumby's mom. mom. I mean, Bumby's mom. What a what a great cartoon uh, from the very beginning. Bumby the dearest. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's uh, Jess Harnell singing that. Um, I think this is really where uh, Slappy. Uh, and Skippy really took off. I mean, uh, you know, my my son uh, Nate did the voice of Skippy, and you know, he later in his uh, acting career would say, you know, please stop having me cry. <laughs> Don't make Skippy cry all the time. But here, it, it is like it makes so much sense. I mean, he sees uh, Bumby's mom uh, in the cartoon uh, clearly. Uh, meeting her demise and which is just a brilliant idea stoner uh, comes up with this concept well you know in cartoons that's just not the case so come on skippy let's i'll show you where she is uh fina waleen she lives in where did she live prescott oh i, I gosh can't oh. remember that's good trivia okay <laughs> Tweet anyway, us. <laughs> just a, a beautiful cartoon. I love where she transforms into her former self. Mm-hmm. And, uh, she lives in a trailer park. Oh, it's <laughs> well, come on in. I got some wiener beaner mix up on the stove and a six pack of fresca in the fridge. So then, Pebble says, hey, get your own Bam Bam lady. <laughs> 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 What's with you? That's not Bumby's mom. She's old. Tactless, yet rude. Oh, and, and, and that's the first ones where we see Randy Beeman's, uh, or, or the Collins segments right there, too. So, Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> get to see those. And she felt a lick, and she thought it was her dog licking her feet, but it wasn't. It was this crazy guy that did that a lot. Okay, <laughs> bye. Episode 9, uh, of course, we're dealing with uh, Wally Lama. Another one of, of Kelly's favorites right there that you would, you would show your mom that episode a lot, right, Kelly? Yeah, I'd make her watch it. <laughs> now, who did the voice for Wally Lama? Oh, uh, I'm forgetting his name. He, play, he played um, the uh, kind of similar kind of character in uh, All of Me. Uh, uh, he was, yeah. a, he was a guest star. I, I forget. I forget his name. Was he in Ghost the movie? He may. I don't think so. I think he, okay. that's a, that's a different guy. But he he voiced uh, some folks like in the, a character in the Ducktales movie. Uh, it's not it Libertini, right? Yes, I think that's it. I oh, think okay. it's it. Yeah, yeah. He he's great, and and this is a, a beautiful cartoon. Um, and they drive Wally, of course, crazy. What do they want uh, from him, Kelly? They want to ask him a question and want to know why do hot dog packages come in, I don't know, hot dogs come in packages of six and hot dog buns come in packages of eight or whatever the number is. Eight and ten or something. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember what. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he did not know the answer to that, so uh, <laughs> he loses. Here's our question. 
Why do hot dogs come in packages of ten and hot dog buns come in packages of eight? I... I... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I... 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 I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Lava, 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 lava. Ring dong. Now that, yeah, it was, it was, uh, again, just a, a really beautiful uh, cartoon. Um, funny, um, silly. Uh, the Warners really are uh, proving themselves to be uh, unique uh, characters doing things that no other cartoon characters are doing, which uh, I, I think really gave them, uh, you know, a new place in the cartoon firmament. Um, they're not like Bugs. They're not like Daffy. They're not, you know, they're not Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck. Uh, really, they're they're their own unique breed of characters yeah. searching for answers. <laughs> Other than Wally Lama, we have Where Rodents Dare. Yeah, this was one of mine that I, I liked. Uh, Peter and I wrote this one, and... Um, I, I was a huge fan. I, I tend to put, I tend to start cartoons with things that I really like. So I was a big fan of uh, Where Eagles Dare, which is Clint Eastwood, uh, Richard Burton, World War II, uh, set in the same location that the Pinky and Rain cartoon uh, takes place. And basically, we we just uh, put them through the paces uh, from that original movie. Uh, with you know, with a pinky in the brain plot of trying to take over the world, and uh, it's just really, I think, really well crafted. Uh, really, uh, I think it's a, a cuckoo's nest cartoon, just beautifully animated. Mm -hmm. And and the characters are really starting to come into focus. Their voices are still uh, in this cartoon. The voices are still uh, Rob's voice is still uh, a little bit, maybe deeper Cockney or lower lower register mm -hmm. and, but it's uh, closer now than it was in when big even when yes, big that's right and just those uh just brief less. in that brief time it's it's changed it's and close, of course yeah. yakko uh you'll find yakko coming up in a couple of episodes like uh uh where dracula which is one of the first ones ever recorded his voice is very different uh Yakko's voice. In other words, his voice changed from the first recordings hmm. forward. Yeah, and the brain really has his uh, delusions of grandeur yeah. in full effect in this one. I mean, he's always general, general brain. brain. <laughs> <laughs> Upon arrival here, we begin our assault. After I give the code word. Oh, oh, brain! Pick me, brain, brain. General brain. Right, general brain. Um, what is the code word? I can't tell you. If you were to be captured, you might talk. What, me? Talk? Oh, General Bray, not in a million years. No, no, not a word, never, not me, no. And if they tortured you? Oh, well, that's different then, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, I think we're that theory that Brain's the insane one. I think it partially comes from this episode, because he's so <laughs> crazy. <laughs> He's crazy yeah. for power. Pinky's genius. <laughs> Pinky's genius is his, his goodwill toward man. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's it's it's a valid point. Valid point. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's wrap it up here with uh, episode ten, and this is yes. King Yakko. And what a great half hour! What yeah, great... another half hour with just the Warners. Yeah, hilarious and and. Uh, just uh, Peter Hastings, uh, a tour de force uh, by him, uh, directed by uh, Alfred Gimeno and Dave Marshall over at Cuckoo's Nest. And this thing is packed. Uh, the energy, uh, it sustains the full uh, at 22 minutes. Um, really, I think uh, I, w I would have a difficult time finding a better half hour uh, of, of the Warners in action. Yeah, it's and it's, I mean, it's a great... Mark, I mean, you want to talk about another Marx Brothers uh, connection? I mean, a lot of people say it's, it, you know, you got duck soup right there, where uh, very similar plot. This is very, very much uh, inspired by duck soup, and uh, but 
the jokes are uh, definitely uh, yakka wacko and dot and and mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, dictator or can I call you dick uh, <laughs> there, there's a lot of great stuff in here and this this is uh, Dave Marshall sent me a cell from this where uh, it's on my uh, website on my uh, blog it's of uh, yakko uh, having um, a very intimate little moment with Hello Nurse, where <laughs> she's he's leaning in a little too close. Yes, he's he's right, right. Well, yeah, right up in between, uh, real close. <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> and so that was first animated that way, and and uh, we were not allowed to keep that. So. <laughs> oh. but, uh, Dave, Dave sent me the cell. <laughs> and there's also a very obscure, like um, you know, sire, you know. Uh, oh yes, joke in there too. Yeah. Hurry, Your Majesty. These are desperate times. You must meet the cabinet. Hello, I'm Yakko. Nice to meet you. Oh, the pleasure's all mine, sire. Wait till we're alone. It's a it's a, a double entendre. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and uh, th- those those work because you know uh, if you're just looking for uh, the basic meaning of what's being said, uh, it's not offensive. If you're mm-hmm. looking for a joke, it's funny, and if you're looking to be offended, yeah, there you go. So it, it covers all bases. <laughs> well, there we go. There's our ten episodes, our first ten of, of Animaniacs. First two weeks, hooray! <laughs> Yay! <Ran> through them. <laughs> well, before we wrap things up for today, we have a special 150th episode. Game to play. Woohoo! It's our 150th episode, which is amazing and shocking. I can't believe it. So Tom has brought along some very special audio for us to listen to. Uh, this is a. Uh, wh- wh- how would you describe this, Tom? Well, I'll just tell you specifically what we call them. These little pieces of music were called sub main titles. When an episode title would show up, say HMS Yakko or Slappy Goes Walnuts, under that card for four and a half seconds would be a little piece of music. So Richard Stone and his gang, the Bernsteins, they created a bunch of these little sub-main title pieces of music. And some of them were earmarked specifically for a certain franchise in the Animaniacs series. Others, uh, less so. But what we're going to do here, we're going to play uh, a bunch of these. I'll play uh, the sub-main title, and then Kelly, Nate, and Joey will give their best guess as to what brand of cartoons that sub-main title went to, okay. which franchise. All right. So here we go. Here's the very first one. Are we ready? We ready. Yeah. Here it is. Kelly. Buttons and Mindy. Nate. I was gonna say Slappy the Squirrel, but now I think I'm all wrong. Uh, that is that is Mindy and Buttons. That's gotta be Mindy and Buttons. That is correct. It is Mindy and Buttons. Ah. All right, we're going to go to the next one. Uh, hang on. Take 62. Thank you. One. Two. Kelly. Slappy Squirrel. Nate. I want to say Buttons and Mindy, but I'm going to say Slappy and Squirrel <laughs> this time. Joey? Yeah, that is definitely Slappy right there. Yes, that is correct. Yay! Okay, Humor esque. <laughs> right. Humor esque. Here's the next one. Submain C, take 63. <laughs> one, two. <sighs> okay. Kelly. Kelly. Oh, that was a tough one. Um, the Warners. All right. Uh, Nate. Sounds pretty good. Um, I'll try something weird and say Chicken Boo. Oh. Yeah, I, I was 
I was gonna say the Warners, but I think I think Nathan hit it with the turkey and the straw. Uh, yeah. It's 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 got to be Chicken Boo, I think. And the answer is Chicken Boo. Nate's right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Nate. All right. Uh, ready for the next one? Yes. Here we go. Uh, this is uh, the next entry in our sub main title game. Sub main A A take seventy three. One, two. Kelly. Uh, Minerva Mink. Nate. Um, I also think it's a uh, Minerva Mink. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go in there as well. Minerva Mink. Rita. Read it and run. Oh. oh! It just sounds so, like, sexy. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? Like uh, uh, Jessica Rabbit, it reminds me of. Now, we did use it for Minerva. Oh, but it was okay. initially oh. used for Rita. Yes. So, uh, anyway, I'm not going to give you any points. Okay. <laughs> that right, was this, a trick question. Yeah. This next one, you're going to get uh, fast. Main AD takes seventy six. One, two, three, four, two. Yes, chicken Nate. boo. No, <laughs> I mean, that was already told. <laughs> we all know it's pinky in the brain, of course, right? Yeah. Pinky, pinky in the brain. brain. All right, we're gonna do one more, and then we'll save these for uh, a big submain title show later. All right. Uh, so this is the last one for this evening. Are we ready? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Listen to this one. A E take seventy seven. Here goes. One, two. Kelly. The hip hippos. The, the hip hippos. Yeah, that's the hip hippos, and 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 uh, right, right, Tom, right, right. That is absolutely correct. <laughs> cool. Okay. Yeah, okay. It was another trick. <laughs> now, yeah, exactly. Uh, now that right there, it did they did have words to that theme song, I think, too, uh, or at least you know an extended theme song. Do you happen to to know off the top of your head if the if that the, the theme song came first or if the little stinger thing right Wait, there? Came what first? was the song? Uh, they, they, oh, I guess the theme actually was at the end of one of their, uh, cartoons where, oh, yes, they yes. Can't properly, the, the jungle was nice, but way behind the Yes, time. that's it. The jungle. For two was amazing nice. hippos with hip and trendy lives. Kelly, you Something got like it. it. That's it. <laughs> Something <laughs> like that. Uh. You know what? We should, we should have, we should have grabbed that and put it in front of their cartoons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, that's Ooh, why it kind of felt like it was there because it just felt like such a a theme to to do. I don't know the hip the, those lovely hip hippos. They, they were not. Uh, we we struggled with them, and and ultimately we we feel like we never figured them out. I think you guys finally absolutely figured them out when in the brain one when the when the brain was put in as their baby. Oh, yeah. I just, oh my gosh, that one is just so so good. So, maybe that was, maybe it was all just a precursor for that. I think so. That, that <laughs> one, I, I do love that one. Was that that was the last one, right? They got the baby, and then I think we just never see him again. Yeah, other that's than the right. baby. that's true. Yeah, that we just we just said, oh, they had their little baby, and that that's we never see them again. So there we go. Uh, Did they show up in macadamia nuts? Yeah, well, I don't um, know if Macadamia uh, came before or after that one. So yeah, mm-hmm. and they're <laughs> in the movie, of course. As but again, they don't talk in the movie. So yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh yeah, they don't have a line. Oh, sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll we'll get into more discussions of the hip hippos and uh, many of the other characters uh, in the in the episodes to come tom this was really a delight thank you so much for coming and talking with us for the beginning of uh of the the series of animaniacs and we really just kind of went through <laughs> the first 10 episodes 
pretty quickly and still got a, a nice uh, in-depth conversation, I think, at the same time. So thank you for taking the time to join us once again. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I loved it. Uh, thanks very much for having me. And uh, yeah, let's let's get together again one of these days. Absolutely. Ooh. Well, let's go ahead and get to some contact information. Uh, Kelly, let's start with you. Where can people get you on find you online? Uh, I'm on Twitter at Yoda Princess, Y-O-D-A-P-R-N-C-S-S, or email Kelly at BigShinyRobot.com. All right. And Nathan, where can people get in contact with you? Uh, Joey, I'm also on Twitter, uh, DjangoFT. That's me. I'm also on Discord if you want to say hi to me there. That's right. You can join the Animaniacast Discord server by going to discord.animaniacast.com and actually I call it the Animaniacast Discord. It's not the Animaniacast Discord. It's the RetroZap Discord server where you can talk to not only us but also tons of other RetroZap uh, podcast creators and writers and talk about everything pop culture including uh, y- you know movies and music. So whatever you, whatever you want to chat about uh, the find folks at RetroZap are there to talk to you about it. Bowie, where can people uh, reach me? Well, Tom, people can get in contact with you by, well, let's see, you are on Twitter, uh, at Tom Ruger, and you you even have a, 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 an Instagram account, I believe, as well, uh, so people can follow you there. But uh, you also have your wonderful blog that you were mentioning before about with King Yakko, which is cartoonatics.blogspot.com if I'm not mistaken. That is right. And I'm also on Facebook. So, yeah, yeah you can find me. He, he's, he's available to be found. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so, uh, other than that, uh, Animaniacast, we are on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And like I said, you can subscribe to us on your favorite podcast player or simply the RetroZap podcast feed. Uh, rate and subscribe. Rate, review, subscribe. All that lovely stuff. And enjoy the fun. There's 150 episodes now of us <laughs> talking about Animaniacs as well as Tiny Toon Adventures, Pinky in the Brain, and Freakazoid. Uh, so, th- you know, the fun continues. What can I say? And, you know, Tom, we wouldn't be here, of course, without you uh, creating those wonderful shows. So thank you again for taking the time to join us as always. Thanks, guys. Well, that'll do it for tonight's episode. So, for Nathan, Kelly, and Tom, this is Joey saying good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. This podcast is not endorsed by Warner Brothers or Amblin Entertainment and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Animaniacs, Tiny Toon Adventures, Freakazoid, the Warner Brothers logo, all names, pictures, and sounds are registered trademarks and or copyrights of their respected trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of the Animaniacast unless otherwise indicated.